In this module, we will look at a continuation of the setup of two-way analysis of variance under the random effects model. Before we had looked at the premise as well as the setup of a two-way analysis of variance model under the random uh, effects model. In this case, we will look at the different null hypotheses that we can test and also we will look at how the variation or the overall variation of the response can be partitioned and how we can study the variances related to the response by partitioning them for the different random effect factors. In a previous module, we had introduced the two-way analysis of variance model. We had discussed the introduction of two-way analysis of variance model for a random effects and a mixed effects. And here we are going to look at the different intricacies and the details of testing of the different hypotheses and uh, contrasts in case of a two-way ANOVA setup for a random effects model. So in case of a two-way analysis of variance random effects model, we consider two factors namely A and B and we consider the factors to be random. As we had defined by random, we mean that the different levels of A and B, the two factors, they are randomly selected from a pool of different levels. Uh, the factors are random, that is we consider that A levels of factor A to be random sample from a population of levels of that factor and B levels of factor B to be a random sample from a population of levels of that factor. So if this is the general premise of a two-way analysis of variance random effects model. Now let us look at the mathematical form of this model. The model looks the same as the one we had used for ANOVA fixed effects model. But there are some important differences as we had stated them before. So the model is given by yijk equals mu plus alpha i plus beta j plus alpha beta ij plus epsilon ijk where alpha and beta are the two effects of the two treatments. Alpha beta ij represents the interaction between the two treatments or the two factors and epsilon ijk is the error term. So in the model uh, shown on the previous slide let us now look at a detailed description of each of the terms. Mu is the overall mean response. Alpha i is the main effect of level i of factor A. And we assume that alpha i follows a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma alpha square. Beta j is the main effect of level j of factor B. And beta j is assumed to be following a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma beta square. Alpha beta ij is the interaction effect between level i of factor A and level j of factor B. And alpha beta ij is supposed to follow a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square alpha beta. Finally, we have the error term epsilon ijk which follows a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma squared. It's the random error term. Alpha i, beta j and alpha beta ij are assumed to be pairwise independent for the model to work well. Now the assumptions that we had taken, there is a long list of them. Let us look at the implication of these assumptions. The mean response for level i of factor A and level j of factor B is a sum of independent selections from alpha i, beta j and alpha beta ij from three normal population as we had seen before and the overall mean response that is mu ij equals mu plus alpha i plus beta j plus alpha beta ij. Another implication is that the variability among the observations can be partitioned among the random factors as follows. We, as we have seen before, uh, the random factors can now be, the random levels of the factors can now be assumed to follow a normal distribution with their respective mean and variances. 
So the overall variance or the variability of the observations of yij can now be partitioned among the random factors as follows. Variance of yij equals sigma y square which equals sigma alpha square plus sigma beta square plus sigma alpha beta square plus sigma square. And this partition is possible because alpha beta and alpha beta ij are in pairwise independent of each other. In the above partition of the variability of yij, sigma square is the measurement variance, sigma alpha square is the population variance of uh, factor A and sigma beta square is the population variance of factor B. Finally, sigma alpha beta square is the population variance of the interaction effects between the two factors. Now let us look at the hypothesis for the analysis of variance two-way random effects model. Just like we had done for one-way analysis of variance, here also we have well defined null and alternative hypotheses as well as in addition to those we have some estimable functions defined on the different levels of the factors as combinations of different levels of the factors which can be tested. So in analysis of variance fixed effects model, we test the equality of the level means corresponding to one or two factors. This is no longer appropriate because the levels in case of the current setup are randomly selected and we are interested in the population of levels rather than any one individual. The appropriate hypothesis test for a one way random effects model is the null hypothesis is given as sigma alpha square equals 0 versus sigma alpha squared is greater than 0. That is we are checking whether the variability among the various levels of factor A are significantly larger than 0 or not. Likewise, we can also write the null and alternative hypothesis along the same lines uh, for the factor B and for the interaction factor alpha beta. So the hypothesis for the uh, analysis of variance random effects model for a two-way random effects model, the three hypotheses that we test are H01 sigma alpha squared equals 0 versus sigma alpha squared greater than 0 as we had seen on the previous slide. Likewise, H02 is sigma beta squared equals 0 versus H12 uh, which is sigma beta square greater than 0 and finally H03 which is the third null hypothesis it states that sigma alpha beta square equals 0 versus sigma alpha beta square is greater than 0. So in all cases we are testing the hypothesis that the variability for that particular factor is 0 against that it is significantly more than 0. Now formulating the test statistic and estimation of variance components as we have mentioned before the aim of an analysis of variance model is first to formulate a test statistic for testing a particular null hypothesis in connection to the mean of the different factors uh, across different factors and also the estimation of variances variance components. So the overall variation of the response is partitioned into different components and we would like to estimate the variances through a two-way or a one-way analysis of variance. So generally the test statistic that we use to test the hypothesis mentioned in the previous slide it follows an F distribution with suitable degrees of freedom and we already have some idea as to how to uh, construct these ratios how to calculate these ratios. This is because the test statistic also called the F ratios are actually the ratios between the mean square of two components of the random effects model. So in case of a two factor analysis of variance random effects model, we have the summations or the squared summations divided as follows. Summation ijk yijk minus y000 squared this equals b times m summation i y i 0 0 minus y 0 0 0 square plus a m times summation j y 0 j 0 minus y 0 0 0 square plus m summation i summation j y i j 0 minus y i 0 0 minus y 0 j 0 plus y 0 0 0 square plus summation i j k y i j k minus y i j 0 whole square. That is, 
we can write the above random effects model sum of squares as follows. The total sum of square equals the sum of squares due to factor A plus sum of squares due to factor B plus sum of squares due to uh, interaction effect between factor A and B and the sum of squares due to error. Also, M is the number of observations corresponding to level I of factor A and level J of factor B. Hence, we can see that the left hand side is the overall sum of square uh, for the total model which has been partitioned into four different components. Now since yijk equals mu plus alpha i plus beta j plus alpha beta ij plus epsilon ijk, we can now write the components as yij0 equals mu plus alpha i plus beta j plus alpha beta ij plus epsilon ij0 y i 0 0 equals mu plus alpha i plus beta 0 plus alpha beta i 0 plus epsilon i 0 0 y 0 j 0 equals mu plus alpha 0 plus beta j plus alpha beta 0 j plus epsilon 0 j 0 and y 0 0 0 equals mu plus alpha 0 plus beta 0 plus alpha beta 0 0 plus epsilon 0 0 0. Now, if we look at the different sum of squares into which we partition our overall variation into, we can see that the expressions are as follows. The sum of squares due to error which was given by summation ijk yijk minus yij0 square equals summation ijk epsilon ijk minus epsilon ij0 whole square. This is because all the other terms get cancelled out when we take the difference between yijk and yij0. This implies that the sum of square due to error divided by sigma square follows a chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom a times p times m minus 1. Now SSA, the sum of square due to the factor a reduces to the form b times m summation i alpha i plus alpha beta i 0 plus epsilon i 0 0 minus alpha 0 plus alpha beta 0 0 plus epsilon 0 0 0 whole square. This implies that SSA divided by sigma squared plus m sigma alpha beta square plus b m sigma alpha square follows chi square a minus 1. Likewise, SSB which is the sum of square due to b can be written as a times m summation i beta j plus alpha beta 0 j plus epsilon 0 j 0 minus beta 0 plus alpha beta 0 0 plus epsilon 0 0 0 square. This implies that SSB over sigma square plus m sigma square alpha beta plus a m sigma beta square follows chi square b minus 1. And finally, the sum of square due to the interaction term AB implies that SSAB uh, equals M times sum of summation I summation J YIJ0 minus YI00 minus Y0J0 plus Y000 square whole square which implies that SSAB divided by sigma square plus M times sigma alpha beta square follows a chi square A minus 1 times B minus 1. 1. Here SSA, SSB, SSAB and SSE are independently distributed. So the mean sum of squares are given by the SSEs that we have uh, that we have calculated divided by the corresponding de degrees of freedom. Hence the mean square error equals SSE over AB times M minus 1. The mean square uh, error due to A equals SSA over A minus 1. Mean square error due to B equals SSB over B minus 1. And mean square error due to A times B interaction equals SSAB over A minus 1 times B minus 1. Now the test statistics. When we calculate the test statistic, this is how we generate them. They are just like in case of one way analysis of variance given by F ratios. And this is how we calculate the F ratios corresponding to the three test of hypotheses that we had uh, stated below, the null hypothesis that we had stated in a previous slide. The test statistics are given by FA 
equals MSA divided by MSB which follows an F distribution with A minus 1 times A minus 1 times B minus 1 degrees of freedom under the first null hypothesis. We reject H01 if the calculated FA happens to be greater than the F A minus 1 comma A minus 1 times B minus 1 comma alpha uh, value that we get from the F distribution table. That is, we conclude that there is variability among the levels of factor A. Likewise, FB equals MSB over MSAB which follows F distribution with B minus 1 and B minus 1 times A minus 1 degrees of freedom under the second null hypothesis. We reject H02 if calculated FB happens to be greater than F alpha B minus 1 comma A minus 1 B minus 1 that is we conclude that there is significant variability among the levels of factor B and finally FAB equals MSAB over MSE which follows an F distribution with A minus 1 B minus 1 comma AB times M minus 1 degrees of freedom under the third null hypothesis. If we do end up rejecting the third hy null hypothesis, we conclude that there is an interaction effect between the levels of the factors of A and B which is statistically significant. Now if we are to estimate the variance components which is another um, objective of our two-way analysis of variance random effects model, we have the expected value of the mean squared error which equals sigma squared. So an estimate of sigma squared happens to be the mean squared error that we obtain from the model. The expected value of MSA estimates sigma squared plus m times sigma alpha beta squared plus b times m times sigma alpha squared expected value of msb equals sigma squared plus m sigma alpha beta squared plus a m sigma beta squared expected value of msab equals sigma squared plus m times sigma alpha beta squared so using these equations we can find the estimates of sigma squared sigma a alpha square sigma beta square and sigma alpha beta square and those estimates are finally of the following form sigma square hat equals MSE, sigma alpha beta square hat equals MSAB minus MSE divided by M, sigma alpha hat square equals MSA minus MSAB divided by MB and sigma beta hat square equals MSB minus MSAB divided by MA. So here we have learned how in a two-way analysis of variance setup, we write down the null hypothesis, how we draw up the alternative hypothesis, how we calculate the F ratio test statistic for testing each of those uh, individual as well as interaction effect hypotheses. Also we have learned how to estimate the standard deviation and the variance estimates, how to get them for the main effects as well as the interaction effects and that is how we have concluded this module.